Hello, welcome and a very good evening. Tonight we want to have another look at the Atari 2600, a games console that came out in 1977, so that's 45 years ago. This particular model here we already seen on my channel, it's the 1983 Vader variant, so called because it's all black plastic, and it's a pretty decent sized console. And we modded it to have composite out and line out on the back, had to drill some holes, and we made the whole upgrade kit ourselves from one transistor, a couple of resistors, and a bit of wire and strip board. It worked reasonably well, and I have been using this for the past couple of years. But a year ago or something like that, I got a hold of this nice little sucker, which is the Atari 2600 Junior. And it's called Junior because, well, you can imagine the size difference is really big, actually. And this thing here came out in the later 80s and was basically the really the budget version. I think at some point this thing cost something like $50. But it still has all the outputs and things that the original Atari 2600 has. And it's built more to a cost point, the buttons are much cheaper, but you still have the cartridge slot and everything works just as expected. So let's upgrade this thing as well, but this time we will use one of the ready-made upgrade kits, namely the one that the Future was 8-bit selling, the deluxe upgrade, where you get a proper cable to attach to and you only need to put in one socket on the back and you don't need to drill any holes because it fits right there where the original RCA jack went. So let's open up this thing, take a look inside, if it works, and then do the upgrade and play some games and watch some demos on the machine. Let's go! And the first order of business is of course to open up the machine. And there are five screws that you have to remove and then you can carefully lift up the top side. Make sure not to break the weird little flat ribbon cable or flex cable I would rather say because that's for the buttons on the upper side of the machine. Next step is to measure the voltage regulator and it's still putting out a nice 5 volts which is good and also on the other side we see roughly 10 volts or 11 volts more or less which is a little bit on the high side I think but seems to be far. Afterwards we are removing the metal RF shield where you have to twist those tabs open so this procedure is totally reversible and doesn't require any soldering which is quite nice. Last but not least we can remove the shielding and afterwards I actually did check out the signals on the CPU and the video output with my oscilloscope and it looked fine. Um, so I think the repair should be, or the mod should be, very well possible and the machine is not dead at all. So that's good news. So the Atari is disassembled and it's actually pretty dirty inside. Not sure if you can make it out, but um, yeah, there's a lot of dust and things in there. I think some animal insect thingy died over there. So we will clean that, but um, since I need to remove the flux after desoldering and soldering, I will clean that up afterward. What components do we need to remove for the mod? First of all, we will use our flux. I will also turn on the soldering iron. We have the solder pump ready. And this is these are the schematics for the Junior for this particular kind of junior without the RF box and the discrete components here. And beep goes my uh, soldering iron. So all these things here have to go. Um, over here we have the TIA, which is, let me see, this component right here, uh, which is the video adapter or video chip. And it goes through several resistors and I'm not sure what this is, probably some op amps, I have no clue. Uh, some ICs and some more resistors and this is the RF stage. 
with the LM3086, which is a couple of transistors on a chip. That's this component. And we need to remove a bunch of components here, R17, C33, R56, R48, C54, transistor Q4 and Q3, and that's it. And I've marked the places where we need to solder the uh, adapter board, which we will see in a short while, which has four cables, red, yellow, black, and white, black being ground, yellow being the composite, and I think white being the audio coming from here. And red being, what did I say? I forgot. Something. Uh, sync probably, I guess. And we will see uh, where to attach that later. But uh, for sure we should start with some of the components that needs removal. Q4 is definitely going away, as is Q3. So we probably can just start with those because they're easy to spot. And of course the RF jack needs to go because in its place we will put the uh, new board. So let's get on to the desoldering. And the desoldering job is done. I managed to get them all off board, all eight components. Uh, interesting fact here is these interesting capacitors, which are pretty neat, I think. I think it's basically just some aluminum foil or something like that, wrapped in some plastic. Then the two uh, transistors. This one didn't want to go away at first, so I cut it off because I don't need it and transistors can be replaced easily. So the whole mod is pretty reversible. Um, we can store all these components if we want to. What actually helped better than the flux, because the flux does help, but it makes my pump sticky, so in between I opened it and cleaned it, is to add fresh solder and to use this little hook thingy to grab onto the component and gently pull while heating from the other side. Um, do not use force because otherwise you might rip the pads off and damage traces and stuff. But this should be good enough. Only thing that's missing is the RCA jack here. We'll do that pretty quickly and then we can install the mod. Okay, so the RCA jack is gone too. The part that looks slightly corroded and the traces are a bit bumpy but that's the case for many of the Atari PCBs you can see that on the back here as well. I actually used uh, the snips to cut this off and then desolder the remaining pins because RCA jacks are not very uh, yeah, I don't know well worth preserving I think because you can replace them easily. But now we can go to the main attraction Installing the mod. So we'll be using the deluxe composite mod for the 2600 by the future was 8-bit. Um, they make a lot of stuff for 8-bit consoles and Commodore machines. Um, they are located in the UK, which means um, after Brexit, I theoretically have, theoretically have to pay customs, but this was cheap enough to be not held up in customs, which is good, because that would have made it 20% more expensive and possibly more annoying, because I would have to go to customs. So let's check it out. <laughs> Interesting packaging. Let's get away with it. So, I have two things here. 
Ja, das checklist mal noch. This is actually um, something for the C64, which I might feature in another episode. It's the 1541 Diag test. It's for testing 1541 floppy drives, which I recently repaired one. And we can probably use this to check the head alignment and RPM and stuff like that. Uh, I think this is a neat addition for old and possibly untested 1541s. So yeah, I'll, I'll check that out in a future episode. But the thing that we actually want to see, and maybe we even have some installation instructions here. Oh yes, we do. Um, let me get this out of the way somewhere. It's this package here, which is the deluxe mod. A bit of noise. And some cables. And here we got the actual PCB, which is rather small. And even some foam pads to help with the installation. That's good. So this is the tiny, tiny PCB, which is basically the usual one transistor mod with some resistors and capacitors, really tiny. Let's get the light up here. And a useful jack here. Um, and you will, we will mount this right here where the old, uh, the other way around, the old uh, RCA jack was. So that we can utilize the hole that is in the Atari 2600 case, actually. So that's neat. Yeah. The cable um, plugs in like this. And then you have a very neat solution with composite and stereo out. Well, it's mono on the 2600, but you get the, the idea. And you don't have to solder anything here, but rather you will take this thing. You can cut it down to size if you want to, um, because the cables are long enough for the bigger models. But we have the junior, so we need only short cables. And um, the junior, well, this instruction is useless for us because this is the one with the RF modulator. So we will have a look in the archive.org website um, where I found, uh, which I found because um, the future was 8-bit had, has had a block where they documented this, but they removed most of their articles on the blog for whatever reason, I don't know why. But archive.org doesn't forget, and this is actually quite useful now. So the red, black and yellow wire will have to go here on near C33, I think. Let's go up here. Uh, so to the left should be the yellow wire, to the top the red wire, and black is ground. So we can do that. Um, we might have to clear up this pad to push this through. And the white will go to R48. We need to clean up this. No, it's 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 okay. So this is where the audio comes out. So let's do that. And that's the mod installed, more or less. Um, of course, now comes the more tedious, even more tedious part. We can, I think, which way around? Oh, this way around. We can plug this in like this, and we can mount it here. But first, I want to brush down all the dirt and grime on this thing. 
And then we can reassemble the whole thing and try it out. And hopefully it will still work. And we will also attach the pad here in a minute. One more thing so that you can see where I actually put the wires. Here are 48 is the audio out. This here near C33 is the uh, ground wire and red and yellow wires for the video come out on the top and on the left of C33. And yeah, this is hopefully good enough documentation that you can mod your own. It's Atari 2600 Junior without the RF box. So that is the Atari 2600 Junior successfully modded. And you can see at the back, uh, the jack is there. You have to be a bit gentle because it's only held in place by the double-sided sticky foam pads. But that's okay, I guess. And I've put Mappy in here already. So we can right away go to play some games and compare the quality of the mod to the original Atari 2600 Vader that I did a couple of years back. And let's see if this mod helps us improve the quality or if it's the same or yeah, if it works at all, maybe. Mappy is one of my all time favorite games on the Atari 2600. It's a homebrew game from 2018 by Champo Software. And yeah, it looks absolutely marvelous. The fonts are very well defined. There's not much artifacting going on here. All the pixels are superbly rendered. So I think this is actually better quality than the 2600 Vader mod. And the gameplay itself looks also very nice. My camera was a bit overexposed here, so that's why you see the glow. But as you can see, you can even see the scan lines now pretty well defined, which was not necessarily the case on the Vader mod. The colors are perfect and I don't see any major pixel crawling going on, so I'm pretty pleased with this. Scramble is another game by Champ Software from 2016. And here the very sharp image also does wonders, because now you can really see your enemies. Plus the pixels are actually, no, not the pixels, the stars are actually pixel sized, whereas on my Vader it looked a bit more blurry. So again, the video quality is excellent. And the same goes of course for Circus Convoy, the new game by Audacity Games, uh, former Activision employees, and it looks perfect on this mod. The patterns that you can see here are more ray patterns from using a CRT monitor and filming this with my smartphone. So yeah, that's not actually visible in real life. But other than that, the image looks fantastic. On to some demo. This is Liquid Candy by Noise from a couple of years ago and it looks marvelous as well. The checkerboard pattern is very clear and the colors are saturated. There's no ghosting, nothing. There's slight noise in bright areas, but I think that's fine. The Coke bottles here are pretty good too, because they are really, really sharp. And as the last test, let's try and compare Galagon on both the 2600 Vader and the Junior. And as you can see, the Vader looks horrible. For some reason, I couldn't get the picture to be better right now. It used to be uh, less noisy. But the fuzziness was definitely there before, so I definitely need to check what's playing here. Maybe it's the new power supply that I'm using, which is a switched power supply instead of the old Atari one. I need to replace that uh, to see if that has any effect. Or some other interference is happening. But as you can see, the mod that we did on the Junior is definitely less disturbed by such things. So. I think I will be keeping the Junior right now for playing the games that I do. And yeah, so I think the mod is definitely better than the homemade mod that I had before, which is a good thing. So that was one successful upgrade of the 2600 Junior. And I actually will use this machine, I think, going forward. 
until I fix the mod on the other machine, if that's possible. I'm not sure if it's only the mod or if it's the other components on the machine. Maybe uh, video quality was just better on the 2600 Junior. But this crisp looking video is definitely much nicer uh, than the slightly fuzzy output of the 2600 Vader. But uh, yeah, so this one will go onto the shelf with the other machines and I will play it and use it every day, more or less. And yeah, I call this a big success. For today, that's it. And please leave a comment if you remember these things or modded one yourself. Share, like and subscribe as usual. If you want, you can also support me on Patreon. Our links are down below in the video description. Until then, have a nice evening.